Okay, so we're moving on to part two of our wardrobe build out. And what we're starting with is building the strike plate, door jam, whatever this piece is called, that the pocket door needs to come in, you know, and reach and rest against. So um, it's gonna line up flush here with this side of the wall. And then it kind of sticks out on this side, creating like this empty pocket of space behind it. And then we're gonna have to build then a piece that comes in towards the closet. Um, and then the face frame will be built out off of that. So that way when our drawers slide out, it'll go past this. So inside this space in the closet, they'll actually be like an extra couple of inches kind of tucked back inside. Um, the other thing that we're doing within sort of this little empty pocket of space that we're gonna end up with here behind this piece is we're running our switch wires for the switches that are gonna be in the bedroom, which are gonna sit over here on this side. So we have this little empty space um, for that side. So that's what we're working on now. We've got this piece cut, we're working on the, the piece that's going to come in this way and then the face frame style that will uh, those will all attach to each other um, and then we'll work on the other side as well but the difference on this side is instead of this side coming in towards the closet um, the little door jam piece is actually going to be coming out this way into what's going to be our little broom closet so um and sort of the same thing is going to happen there where um that's going to sort of become become the face frame of the broom closet and then we have wires for switches that are going to come down and we're going to have some switches in here that are going to be our bathroom lighting switches so that's what we're working on for part two is sort of building out these jams and starting the face frames with these styles that'll run down and then we'll start moving on to kind of the rest of the styles and rails for all of our face frame for the closet. Good. Is it flush on the other side? Yeah. That's flush on that side. Yep. Okay. And the door. Here, I'm good at So we're continuing work on this kind of striker plate thing. We've run our wire now for where we're going to have the outlets or the uh, switchboard for the bedroom. And now we made these spacers that are going to go in here and give that board we made something to grab onto. And so we've made quite a few of them and we're going to put them every so many inches so that we can screw that board in behind the faceplate. So then when we have a faceplate, it'll, it'll go like this and you won't be able to actually see the screws. They'll kind of be in the same area as where the faceplate was. At least that's our hope.
curl it in. All right, so we're working on the styles and rails for our closet here. And so one of the challenges that we've kind of come across is, you know, if I want to get a measurement all the way to the roof, I'm forced to kind of do something like this. And I can kind of see that it's around 72 and maybe 7 eighths or so, um, but it's not terribly precise because I have to bend this. And we have seen they make these little things for your um, that you can put on your tape measure that um, go flat and then they kind of extend and they say okay you know add an inch or whatever um, we were gonna get one of those but um, what we've been using is this little laser measure and so this thing's really cool because you just put it against this maybe against the side like this and then you can see it lasers to the other side and then it tells me that's 15 and a half inches wide. And so this is way more exact than we've been able to get with the tape measure because at first we didn't trust this thing and so we, we were doing both. We've done, you know, the tape measure for a long time. So we, we did both and we kept checking against each other and this one was almost always more accurate. So this is supposed to be accurate to within, I think, a sixteenth of an inch and it has proven to be about that. So. Um, anyway, if I'm going to take this measurement, I'll put this on the floor and I will shine my laser beam till it hits where I need it to go, which is about uh, right there, so maybe a little bit there, okay? So I'll take a measurement. I usually do it twice just to be sure, and it looks like I've got 73 and a quarter. So like I said, <laughs> I measured that at 72 and 7 eighths, I think, with the, with the tape. But I think 73 and a quarter is probably more accurate. So anyway, so we just put this here and we fire and, you know, that was to the aluminum piece. So it's 73 and a 16th there. So we're going to go ahead and I'll take a couple more measurements just to be sure. But this is what we've been using and... Um, it's it's proven to be like a pretty valuable little tool All right, so the closet is mostly mocked up. So we've cut all the styles and rails and it's just clamped in here. So we're trying not to breathe too hard because it'll fall over. But anyway, um, we've got it all measured out. Everything is nice and square and fits. And um, so this is the cover we are talking about for the false wall. This is where the door comes across and will rest kind of just on this little area to form the seal. And then here's where we had to kind of see how we made the fake wall here. And so we have spacers behind that. And so when you look at it, it just kind of looks like a thick wall. But in the back, um, there's the same, you know, there's the full amount of space in the actual closet. So since we did that, we had to offset everything off to the left to make it all look um, uniform and uh, kind of the same size. So this will have doors that open like this. And then this will have two doors that come out like this. So, and obviously down here, there's the six drawers we talked about. So, um, so we're getting all that set. We're getting everything ready, but we kind of wanted to show before we pull it all apart again, everything is labeled on the back. Um, and we've got little marks kind of how to line everything up. So this is all about to be painted. So we've got to paint and prime all this stuff. And then on the ceiling, See, this looks kind of ugly, but what's going to happen is these are big enough to where it easily covers that, um, you know, by quite a bit. So anyway, that's kind of what it'll look like there. Um, and I think the ceiling's going to be white also, is it not? Yes. Okay, so the ceiling's also going to be white. So it'll just be white on white, kind of like that. So it should look pretty good. That's it. So we're going to take it all down, sand, give it a good sand, and get it ready to, uh, to paint it.
keep videoing. Mm -hmm. This is not the fun part. <laughs> All right, it's six o'clock and um, we need to paint this stuff. And in Arizona, this is the only time where it even approaches a temperature where we could um, paint. I think it's like 85 or 90 right now. So we need to hurry up and paint before it gets to be more than that. Um, so we're out here and we've prepped everything um, before. So we sanded everything yesterday and got everything ready. We've set it all up and now Michelle's gonna go ahead and paint this stuff. Um, We'll see how it goes. So we've we've got primer. We're using Kills um, Sealer Primer, and it's an oil-based product. So um, we're gonna shoot it with a gun. So we've got <clears throat> this Graco gun. Um, this thing was awesome when we used it with the green paint. So um, hopefully it works for us here. So we're gonna get going doing that. This is plan B for the primer. We found out that the gun we have isn't meant for this kind of primer. So we're gonna try this. And if we don't like this, then we'll probably get a water-based primer. So we'll see how this turns out. All right, so we're out here prepping the face frame for our new cabinet. So we had quite a few lessons learned this week. So one is the primer that we originally used to prime all this stuff was an oil-based uh, kills primer. So earlier this week, or earlier, uh, sometime last month, we got a sprayer. So we got an airless Graco sprayer to make this job hopefully a little bit easier. Unfortunately, with that oil-based paint, um, it's flammable. <laughs> and it kept sparking. So those two combinations are not a great thing. So we couldn't use it. So um, also we just had a ton of overspray with that, um, with that paint and it, we later discovered that it was because we never set the gun back down from when we cleaned it. It was all the way up. The gun goes from one to 10 and we had it on 10. So that was one lesson. So it was over spraying like mad we can you can kind of see here it was just it was putting the the paint on super thick it's now all over our driveway so we've got to clean that up anyway that was one lesson learned so we thought oh we might be able to still use the oil-based um, primer if we just brush it on or I'm sorry if we just roll it on and so then we tried to roll it on and I don't know if this shows up real well on camera but it just gave literally the worst finish. It looks like textured drywall. So now we're having to take most of that down with our sander. We got a little orbital sander there that we're trying to take this stuff down. So we've got to take it almost all the way down um, with the sander. So this has killed our, productiv our productivity this week. Also, we're using ply. And so the sides of the ply had some voids and we made the mistake of priming before we filled those voids. So that's another lesson learned that we have is um, fill these voids. You can see the red stuff. Um, we use Bondo. Bondo is actually a really good thing. That worked out great. So, um, so you can also see it here. So the Bondo was awesome. It really like smoothed things out. But, like I said, we primed it and thought, oh, maybe the primer will cover some of those voids. Um, no, it won't. So, <laughs> so that was another lesson learned. So we've used a lot of time this week just trying to get this right, trying to get a system down. Um, we're obviously making a huge mess out here. So um, anyway, that was the key. That was some of our takeaways from this week that have kind of killed our productivity. Um, so I wanted to get those 
down um, we've been pretty frustrated so we haven't made a ton of videos on this but I wanted to get those out before I forget them and so I don't have to relearn them um, so prep is the number one thing so you can see here I don't know if that shows up real well but this the texture of this is is almost it's almost like a drywall it's real bumpy and that's because of this you know when we rolled it on with the sponge it kind of took the pattern that the sponge had which you know was pretty smooth but you know it's a sponge so anyway We've now got water based, so we went back and bought this. Um, this is now a water based um, primer. So we thought that the paint we had chosen, since it was an enamel, would have to be a, would need an oil based. We thought that the paint we chose was an oil based paint. It's not, it's a water based paint. And so with an oil-based paint, you have to use an oil-based primer most of the time. Anyway, we were under the impression that we had to use an oil-based primer. That was not the case. Um, so now we're having to go back through and sand these all back down. We'll probably prime them one more time, sand them one more time, and then actually finish painting them. So here's the finish on this guy. I don't know if it's if you can see it. So it finished off pretty well. Yeah. It's still wet, but looks good. So we've sprayed all these. Alright, we've got the face frames all installed now and secured in place. So they are ready to accept um cabinet drawers up here and then pull we'll uh, make drawers for these so um, we've painted them white that went on fairly well this is the wall that we kind of fabricated and to show you how it fits um, this will come across and just like that so it's a perfect fit um, that was the reason we had to build these first so we're gonna move on now to start making some um, some dressers so that's what's next. or some drawers <laughs> sorry that's what's next <laughs> 